Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ian, your course TA, and in this video I want to go over some updates that are happening with the Yahoo Weather API. So Colt uses the Yahoo Weather API as an example for your first HTTP request to a third-party API. And now, as of tomorrow, Thursday, January 3rd, 2019, they're going to be retiring this API. And so you can email them and get credentials and things like that. And we may try to do that. Uh, I'll have to talk to Colt about it. But in the meantime, just to keep you carrying on with the course, I'm going to show you another API that's totally free and you can use it to get experience with making requests the same way that you could have used the Yahoo API back before they retired it. It's actually the second today. They're retiring it tomorrow. So if you were to run your code now, then you would get something like this. It would say the sunset in Hawaii is at, and then it would tell you the sunset time. That's great, but like I said, they're going to retire it tomorrow, so you're not going to be able to use it anymore unless you get uh, API keys and all that stuff. So in place of the Yahoo Weather API, I'm going to use something called JSON Placeholder. And this is a really simple API that basically has a bunch of dummy data. So if we scroll down, you can see they have an example here. You can even click try it to run it. Uh, they're using this dot then syntax, which is promises. We're using callbacks. Uh, I can go over this at the end of the video, but right now let's just focus on getting it working. So they have a list of the different resources. We'll use the uh, users resource. So basically you just go to the JSON placeholder dot T-Y-P-I-C-O-D-E dot com forward slash users, and that will give you back all of this JSON. So as you can see, it's kind of hard to see this, but this is a left opening square bracket, and then it's got a bunch of objects inside of it. So it's an array of objects. So if we want to make a request to get the first user, we would just append a forward slash and then a one up here on our URL, and the response would just be an object with the user who has an ID of one. So let's go ahead and take this URL up here, copy it, and head over to our code. So I'm working locally in Sublime. This is the exact same thing if you're using C9. You're gonna have your code editor, you're gonna open up a new file, you're gonna save it, and then you're gonna run it inside of the terminal for C9. I'll just be using an external terminal over here, but it's all the same commands. Like I showed you a moment ago, this is the original code. So it logs out, so it's the sunset in Hawaii is at dot, 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 and then it sends this request. And as long as there's no error, and the status code is 200, which means okay. Then we go ahead and we parse the JSON that they send us. And well, it's actually a string. We parse it and turn it into JSON. And then we log a certain property, which is the sunset property. We're gonna look at this other API and see what kind of options it gives back to us. So we don't need this console log at the top on line three. I'll go ahead and get rid of that. And then we don't need this super long string argument here. So go all the way through and leave the single quotes so you just have this empty string and then inside of it we can plug in our json placeholder dot typey code forward slash users forward slash one and this will give us back that object if we save this now we kind of want to jump inside of here and take a look at what we're getting back so i'm going to show you a really cool npm package called locus so on this line right here i'm going to say eval and then inside of parentheses i'm going to say require with parentheses and then inside of those parentheses, I'm gonna say locus. So it's eval require locus. Now this isn't gonna work until we install locus. So over in your terminal, you're going to run npm i, that's short for install, space, dash, capital D, that's short for development dependencies, and then the word locus, L-O-C-U-S. And so that's gonna install this locus package. And whenever it's done installing, then we can run node, app.js to run this app.js file that we're working in. Make sure that you save the file first. And so if we run it, it's gonna run the code and then it's gonna open up Locus. And so what Locus does is it freezes the code right here at this line. And then we have access to any of the variables that are available to us. So we'd have access to the request variable and the error variable, the response variable and the body variable. And so at this point, we've actually run the request. We've sent a get request to this URL and we have the response in the body. And so we can take a look at those and see what they're giving us. So 
this is kind of difficult to see. Let me see if I can change this up real quick. One second. Okay, so hopefully you can see the text a little bit better. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at those variables. So if we look at the error, there is no error, so we get back null. Let me move this to the middle so you can see it just a little bit better. All right, so the next thing we want to look at is the response. And so the response is a lot of stuff. You scroll up, you can see there's all kinds of information in here. And that's great. Really, the only thing we're truly interested in is the response.status code. And we just want to see what that returns. So we can take a look at it right here, response.status code with a capital C and it's 200 perfect so the other thing we're interested in is the body well the body right now is this giant string with all these escaped characters and returns and things like that how do we get that to be a nice pretty uh, JSON output so just like Colt has right here with the JSON.parse of body we can do that right here JSON.parse pass it body and now we have this nice looking object and it's got all these properties inside of it. And you'll notice that's the same thing that we got back here in the browser. I'm using, uh, I think it's JSON view in Chrome. It's a, a Chrome extension to make the JSON look pretty. But we also get that effect over here inside of our terminal. So now that we know the different properties, we can actually log some of this information out in our terminal or in our program. And then that will show up in the terminal. So let's, let's start with the name for this specific user. So if we go over to our code, basically all this stuff is going to stay the same. We're checking to see if there's no error and if the status code is 200, which checked out, if you remember, error was null and the status code was 200. Then we parse that data. So we create it inside of a variable, var parse data is equal to json.parse body. And if you want to use the latest up-to-date syntax, then you could always use const right here and const up here. And const is basically any variable that you don't need to change or reassign later in your code. Uh, don't worry too much about it. Cole has a video for it on YouTube. You can look it up on his channel. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and continue on inspecting this information, this data that we're getting back from this JSON placeholder API. So we have this parse data right here. And right now we can log it out. And this will, if we get rid of all this other junk that came from the uh, previous API, the Yahoo Weather API, and we just log the parse data, then that's going to give us that object that we were just looking at a moment ago. So let's go ahead and save this file, head back over to our code. We'll exit out of Locus. Make sure that you remove all that Locus code, the eval require Locus line from uh, your app.js file. And so if we clear this out and we run node app.js again, once the request is done running, then we get back this object. And this object has information about this random user that the JSON placeholder API is giving back to us. So now we want to go into this object and actually log information out about, let's just go ahead and get the person's name and then maybe their address, uh, let's, let's just say the street of where they live. So we'll do console log parse data and you can use bracket syntax and pass in the name this way. So if we save and we run it again, then we get Leanne Graham or you can use the dot syntax dot name same thing and you'll get the same response so we can say parse data dot name that'll give us Leon Graham lives oh, we have to concatenate this of course so we'll concatenate it with a string lives what happens if we just put the string like this I'll show you it's going to attach lives to the last name so let's go ahead and put a space right here so lives in space plus and now if we scroll back up here and look at this object, we want to get the address and let's just say the city. So we'll say lives in and then we want to do parsed data dot address dot city. Now if we save that file and we run it again, it says Leanne Graham lives in Gwenboro. Awesome. So play around with it. Go ahead and try to get different properties from here. You can uh, concatenate them together if you like. I can actually show you real quick some new syntax. Uh, and if we don't want to do the concatenation with the plus sign and the strings, then what we can do is we can wrap this whole thing in back ticks. And then we get rid of the plus signs and the single quotes. And then anywhere where we have a variable here and here that's going to actually give us data from a variable, 
we can use a dollar sign and then an open curly bracket and then wrap it in a closed curly bracket so it looks like this and then the same thing for this one and basically what this is doing is creating a string and that string is allowing us to embed dynamic data through these variables and so lives in is going to be part of the string the output of this variable is going to be part of the string and then the output of this variable will be part of the string so this is exactly the same as the concatenation that we had a moment ago with the plus signs and the single quotes if we save this file and we run it again then we still get Leanne Graham lives in Gwenboro but now we're using this cool ES6 template literal syntax. That's what that's called, it's a template literal. So we've also changed our variables to use const instead of var. That's also ES6 syntax. We do have a function here, which could be an arrow function. So we could take out the word function, and then on the other side of these three arguments, right outside the closing paren, we could put this arrow and then save it. And if we run this, we get the same thing. So that's working with what's called an arrow function, and it's just a cool succinct syntax that we can use from ES6. But we can also use promises if you want to do that, and that's what I was talking about earlier with, let's see here, I gotta go back to the JSON placeholder example. So if you scroll up, they have fetch, and then fetch returns a promise, it has dot then. I think you can get the request package with promises so they have a package called request promise and it's basically just using a promise library so that you can use promises instead of callbacks so if you want to use this you can go ahead and check it out uh, basically you can steal from their cheat sheet right here instead of using request is equal to request you do const rp stands for request promise is equal to require request promise and of course we need to install that so we do an npm i dash capital S, that's npm install save, request promise, and then once that installs, we can go back over here and change this to rp. Everything else would be the same, except instead of having a callback here, we would just wrap this like that. And then on the next line, we could do a dot then, and the dot then, let's go ahead and look at their syntax over here, would take a function as an argument and it would give you whatever comes back. And then the error would be handled in a dot catch. So let's go ahead and try that out. We could say dot then, we could use the word function, or we just learned how to do the arrow functions. So we can do an arrow function here, and we can pass in the HTML string, and we can console log the HTML string that it gives us, Let's go ahead and get rid of this stuff right here. Well, let's borrow this right here. And then of course there's the dot catch syntax, which is going to catch an error if there is one. And we can console log the error. And just so we know that it's an error, let's put the uh, error like that. So this will give us the string error exclamation and then it'll actually give us the error from the error argument. And so now let's go ahead and try to run this and see if it works. So at this point, we just run node app.js. And it's saying that there's an unexpected token somewhere. Let's go ahead and find that and figure out what's going on. Ah, okay, I figured it out. So we have RP, and then we have the argument here, and then we do a dot then and a dot catch. And we do not need this code from the code that we had previously. So we get rid of that and we can save it you can see i converted these back to function to see if that was an issue and it's not so i'm going to go ahead and plug those back in as arrow functions now if we run it we get back this html string that's great let's go ahead and go back to what we had earlier let's do const parse data is equal to json.parse html string and they're calling it HTML string. We were calling it body before, so to stay consistent, we'll just call it body. So const parse data is equal to json.parse body, and then we do a console log parse data.name lives in parse data.address.city. Save it and run it one last time. And we get Leanne Graham lives in Gwenbro. Here's your ES6 version, or you can go back to how we had it previously if you just want to use the request package and you want to use callbacks. But this is all the latest syntax if you want to stay up to date. 
if you want a really easy way to learn this stuff, then just look up like ES6 in one video on YouTube. Or Colt has another course where they cover ES6 and ES7 and all that ES2015 all the way up to the latest syntax. This is just a little taste uh, if you're interested in this kind of stuff. So that's it for an alternative to the Yahoo Weather API. Hopefully I haven't talked your ear off and you've learned a little something. You can use the JSON placeholder for now until we figure out what's going on with this Yahoo Weather API, what the next steps are with that. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.